Welcome everybody. Thanks, John, for reminding me. I, these uh, various different people uh, have to remind me every week to record. I really like when I don't because it's more in, it's more personal. Uh, but it, it's it's cool both ways. There's a lot of people that can't make it and they like to record. I just want to add one thing real quick. It's you know the importance of us being here is because there's an acceleration. And we, it's the, the, we're prepared for what's out there. Yes. And um, we do not take this lightly. It's when we gather and what's shared and the encouragement, it is very critical. It's very important. And um, yes. we just, just to press in even more for, for to be the change, the game changers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, that's so cool. I'm glad you said that because, critical. you know, I used to have over 100 people in these meetings and and I never did a lot of hyping the meetings. I just said, here's a meeting. And we had incredible numbers. And, and for the whole time, I just had this thing. Well, David got in trouble with taking a census of how many people he had. And so I don't do that. I don't do a lot of hype. I say, here's the meeting. And God, you build the house however you want to build it. And I'm good with yeah. it. Now I really, really like these small groups. Where it's just more intimate, more personal. Everybody can share. And it's just it's just a family affair, you know, where we can just all be together for an hour once a week. And so uh, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for being here. That means a lot to me as well. So, hey, we're going to just jump right in. I want to talk about, uh, we're hearing a word right now, a lot of some of the uh, forerunners, and that word is a transitionary. Oh. <laughs> How many of you feel like you are a transitionary? I know. Okay. I, am. I know I am. Most of you, how many of you like change? A few less. <laughs> oh, well, about the same. Okay, good. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I do too. I love change. But then there's some other areas that God identifies because my favorite prayer, you know, search me, oh God, always comes to the place where he shows me there's this little thing in your mindset or in your actions or the words that I speak that's not, it's not of me it's not of heaven and so i always want to be searching and paying attention listening to god and, and uh intentional about about uh my progression from glory to glory but uh i i found out that uh you know i've been considered a forerunner for a long time and i like that a lot of people have definitions of what a forerunner is i just the simple definition for me is uh, a forerunner is a person who never settles. You run faster too. You run faster too. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand you. They don't get you. You probably are all are forerunners. Now, a pioneer is a little bit different because a pioneer will settle, mm. right? Oh, wow. Mm. But if you're a forerunner, you never settle. Mm. I'm always looking for the next big thing. And it's not the big hype thing what God is doing. I'm looking for, for what he's doing. Well, it is the big thing too, but, but I'm looking and, and seeing what's going on right now. It's like, there's more, there's more, there's more. I know there's more, there's gotta be more. And so uh, I found second Corinthians three eighteen in, uh, in the message Bible. And I think it's really cool. I've, I've jotted down a few few of the uh, uh, different translations in the Message Bible, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, whenever though they turn to face God as Moses did, God removes the veil and they are face to face with God. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see that picture? Mm -hmm. Let me pull up this. Yeah. What's the matter? How come I can't do it? Oh, there he is at the bottom. I want to do this picture that I created on... Uh, on mid journey AI while we're talking. And so uh, that was created on mid journey uh, AI by it's the text to picture uh, uh, artificial intelligence software. I use the scripture and this is what came out. And so uh, face to face with Jesus. And I'm going to read the other uh, 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 
I forget which version it is, but it talks about as you're looking as in a mirror face to face with Jesus. So this one goes on to say, uh, they suddenly recognize that God is a living personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, the old constriction, constricting legislation, there's some courtroom <laughs> language right there. The old constricting legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free from it, all of us. Now, I want to say is when we search, ask God, or we pray that prayer, search me, O oh God, where are the constricting legislations that I've created in my own being? Uh, Robert Henderson says the only, if you have a lack of kingdom manifestation, it's the result of a legal issue. Mm -hmm. So wow. number one, let me ask you a question. How many of you are manifesting as he is? So am I in this world? 100%. I'm not. I don't know anybody who is. That's the goal. And how many of you are manifesting 100% uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Mm -hmm. Maybe some areas, but maybe not in its fullness. So there are constriction, <laughs> constricting legislations in place, but they have been made obsolete. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that keeps us in those things is a, a spirit of religion. Yeah. Hmm. And we don't want to look at ourselves and say, that's the spirit of religion. But I tell you what, every time Holy Spirit was pretty regular with me, I, uh, he said, uh, I want you to take a look and, 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 and search within you. And every time I did, I, and it was specifically for a spirit of religion, every time I did, I found it every single time. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, you can too. Yeah. And it may be a small thought. It may, may be a mindset, maybe a, a motive in your heart while you're doing something, maybe a, a religious spirit that's tied you to something, a, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, soul tie. It could be a list, long list of any, anything that uh, we're talking about, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, let's see. What's his name? Uh, Peter Wagner put out an amazing article about the spirit of religion. You can find it on online. Just Google it. And you'll find it come up with, with about 25. I added another 30 or so uh, uh, examples of what a spirit of religion looks at like. And so that's what I begin to look at when Holy Spirit says, I want you to take a look uh, again at the spirit of religion and we're, what happened was I had this major deliverance in Death Valley, Arizona, of all places, going through all a long list of all that stuff I needed to die to. And after that, I felt really, really free and good. And it's just I felt like I was just like being just 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 traveling along. And I get associate pastor position up in Reno, Nevada. I said, wow, I didn't even plan for this to happen. But look, at God's blessing on my life. And then he said, uh, now I want you to, I want, there's something else I want you to deal with. And they said, Terry, you have a critical and fault finding spirit. I said, what, what are you talking about? I never put anything critical or fault finding against somebody else or something on, on Facebook. He said, yeah, you're right, but it's in your heart. I go, Ugh. It's in my heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the fingers type. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. So what, you, what is in your heart is probably a constrict, constricting legislation that keeps us in bondage. Actually, it's a covenant you've made with yourself in agreement with the works of darkness. And so it goes on to say in the scripture, nothing between us and our God, our face is shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured, much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Yeah. Isn't that cool? 
Very and so this picture here was was made from that scripture. Mm. And I love it because it's just two people looking at each other, Jesus in the mirror. And I asked earlier before we actually got started, I said, who do you see when you look in the mirror? Mm. I, and I was, I, I, I had to be honest. I said, I see me a lot, but mm. I don't want to see me. I want to see him. But Jesus said, if you see me, you see the father. So there's our prototype. There's our role model. There's the one. I don't have a right to express my opinions. I don't have a need to be right. I don't have a need to, to be critical and fault finding against anybody or anything. I need to be the expression and the manifestation of God on the earth. Now you can go back in the old Testament, do whatever there if you want, but, 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 uh, we're under a new uh, governmental legislation, but I believe outside of, uh, you know, you've got this whole group of people. If you've been on Facebook a while, you'll see it. Uh, I'm calling out this person, you know, I'm exposing this person, expose, 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 expose this person, expose that person. Uh, I just want to issue them a, con uh, a, 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 a word that, you better be careful because probably if you'll search, you'll, you'll more than likely find that everything you're doing is based on a critical fault finding spirit. So what you focus on is what you create. You're digging for the dirt instead of the gold in that person. And obviously, yes, there are some things that need to ex be exposed, but it's not an exposure of whatever you want to expose. I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. So it becomes an intimate relationship like the scripture here uh, uh, leads us to, to we, we're looking at him in a mirror, becoming like him. We're looking at him. Do I see Jesus when I look in the mirror? Does he see himself when he's looking in the mirror? And so I think that's a beautiful picture of, of what, uh, what things look like. So I'm going to close that out. And uh, so let's see. While we're away, I had a message come up, and Donna Nieper's right there. She's going to share something. <laughs> Anybody's welcome to. It's just always good to see Donna and everybody else. Just jump in whenever you want to. Uh, how many of you have been hearing that word transitionary lately? Mm -hmm. Some of the some of the uh, uh, forerunners that are out there uh, are using that word, like John Paul uh, uh, Abraham. Is it Justin, Justin. Justin Paul Abraham? Yes, there you go, John Paul Jackson. You're close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin Abraham. Yeah, some of that kind of people they're using that word and i like it a lot because i love being a transitionary i love moving from glory to glory to glory to ever increasing glory to ever increasing glory and that's that's what i live for it's just really what's next god what can i and a lot of times i feel like i just you know the lord told me one time he said i don't want you ever to hold on to anything so tightly that you can't let go of Wow. Anything. I don't want you to hold on to anything so tightly that you can't let go of. That's a good word. Yeah. And I can apply it to this. And as God moves from a low glory and another statement, I heard somebody says, I don't want to get caught in the best of the last move of God. It's like, Oh, I don't want to get caught in the best of the last move of God. And uh, uh, other than having a, a mandate that the Lord has you in those places, then it's fine. But if I'm a transitionary, I've got, well, let me share a dream with you, Had. I've sh shared this dream over and over for uh, a couple of years ago. But the dream was I was standing at the banks of this raging river. And I knew the Lord wanted me to cross the river, but there was no way I could swim. It was that rough. 
And I looked to my right and I saw this bridge that was being constructed, major eight, 10 lane going each way. And uh, uh, there was thousands and thousands of people lined up for this bridge to be completed, being built. And so I was still over here to the left of the bridge, uh, knowing uh, he just wanted to show me that. And I, I said, you know, I want you to take a leap of faith over the bridge, over the water. And I go, uh, okay, there's no way I can do this. But I backed up a few steps and, and took a little run and go, hey, look at this. I made it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and it was like probably three football lengths across. So there's no way I could have wow. done that in the natural. And I was just surprised that I made it. And it was definitely God that, that took me across the water. But what he said when I got over there, he said, Terry, that, that you are a forerunner. We can use the word transitionary in there too. You are a forerunner. You have to go enter into the promised land so that you can experience everything that is there for my people so that you can become the bridge that allow those thousands and thousands of people to cross over. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm just one stone in the bridge. You know, so I have a, I have a, uh, I guess a mandate to be a little bit in that world and a little bit in that realm and, you know, this and that and other, but, but, but uh, I'm finding more, more peace and more home in my, <laughs> my, uh, I don't know, promised land, whatever you call it. I don't know. I call it a cave. Sometimes I call it wilderness. I call it heaven on earth. Uh, I call it this realm of encounters. It's all different things, but, but just really, really nice. And, and um, to know that, uh, you know, like Yeshua, I, I can, I experience a lot of rejection not a, I'm overlooked a lot. I might be some of the things you guys go through. You're, you're not yeah. considered in a lot of things and, and you're passed over and, and you're not invited to, to, to whatever, uh, you know, so uh, a lot of rejection in there, but you can't let that go to your heart. You've got to know where you are and know that, that those kind of things are going to happen because it's who you are. And so I have to be in this promised land. And I, I believe it's always moving from glory to ever increasing glory. Not everybody's going to get it. But thank God for you guys. You listen, you listen to me every week. So, and I listen to you. So that's really, yeah, yeah, come on. You're cool. I love you guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me read the other scripture that's with that. It's... Uh, the Amplified Version is a little different, too. And we all with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. That's what that picture is about. We're seeing him uh, uh, in a mirror uh, as the glory, as himself. And so it's almost like a, a place where we, uh, what's the word, introspection, where we look in ourselves and search ourselves. Am I looking like him? Uh, uh, am I, am I acting like him? Am I speaking like him? Am I doing things like him? Uh, uh, it's almost a place where, where we're searching as we're looking in the mirror. What am I doing? It's not adding up, uh, to, to, to who he is and how he does things. And so, uh, uh, uh we're progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Now I did a, a one more scripture, Acts 17, 28 in the Amplified version was pretty cool too. Uh, for in him, we live and move and exist or have our being that is in him. We actually have our being as even some of our own prophets have said, for we also are his children Another version, another couple of versions say we are his offspring or we are his generations. And so to me, that, that looks like we're moving from glory to ever increasing glory, but I don't want to get stagnant. I don't want to get stuck in a previous realm of God's glory, as good as it was. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I mean, God had me in the apostolic prophetic for 15 years, and it was amazing. It was really powerful. Hector, you can probably say amen to some of that you've been in, and all of us can, because it was amazing. It was where God had us. But if I would have stayed there, I probably could have been uh, in uh, disobedience to the Lord if I had this calling as a transitionary, a, a pioneer, or a forerunner on my life, I could be in disobedience because I might have a soul tie. I might have, you know, this thing about, about uh, people uh, uh, given to my ministry or, or this title I have or the honor that I have, whatever. That was all great and wonderful, but he's moving in such a way that I, I believe part of this is coming to the place where no eye was seen, ear heard, or mind can see. So it all, both these scriptures talk about an intimate relationship with Jesus where you sit with him face to face. Uh, uh, you can take the mirror out of it face to face with him to know uh, how you're doing in this transfiguration. Amen. Let me get a couple more and then we'll just talk about this thing. Let's see. So a transitionary always embraces change. The transitionary always embraces change. And through the stuff you don't understand, which is a lot of it for my process, why is this happening? This is something that seems a little negative. I dealt with a lady the other day. She had this encounter with a demon. And, uh, I was telling her, what are you doing on the battlefield? And she knows about the courtrooms of heaven. You're, you went back to the old school. You went back to the old old. Uh, Jesus in the mirror, how we were trained, how we were taught to handle situations was all warfare mode. And so uh, in, in our sonship journey and in our journey as a transitionary, we know that every eternal, uh, there is an eternal purpose in everything we experience. Absolutely everything. Wow. Whether it feels good or whether it feels bad, if you can extract that out of that, that experience, you'll be at peace because you know that God has written everything about my life on the scrolls of destiny. Everything is on my, the blueprint that I have to go through this. It's almost like who's, who mentioned the darkness and the light earlier. It's almost like the yin and the yang pictures. Like if there was no light, there'd be no darkness. So we have to learn how to exist in the dark times. We have to learn how to exist when it's light and bright and beautiful. We have to learn how to uh, uh, live within the dark realms and what God is doing in the wilderness, what God is doing in the cave season, what God is doing in the seven years living in your van. <laughs> and we have to figure those things out. But when you find his eternal purpose, we know that they're, 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 he He's, he gives you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Absolutely everything. He's healed every infirmity, every disease I've ever had. It's his word. That's what he does. He is, he's already healed every infirmity, every disease. He's handled every financial issue, blah, 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 down the list, down everywhere. <laughs> he's already done it. We just don't believe his word. We have this old legislation going on in our mind that we do not believe his word. Amen. And so we're driven by adventure into the unknown. We're driven by adventure into the unknown, into what no eye has seen, ear heard, a mind can see, deep into the mysteries of Yahweh. And a forerunner, a pioneer that won't settle. But a transitionary is ready to go at any given moment, any given time when the Lord says, <laughs> it's funny because I've got this uh, ex-girlfriend that we're talking again, and she wants to settle down. I'm going, how, how does that work? <laughs> and she's, how, how's that going to even work with me? I don't know. It's like, I'm a forerunner. It's like, that seems like a clash. I don't know. I'm at, God, what are you doing? Ah, oh, I don't get it. But anyway, so we're going to figure that out. 
<laughs> um, Tori, one of the things that, you know, we think that we, we, there's a lot of um, great experiences people are having. Well, I think when he shows you his heart and the compassion, that so many times we miss the heart of God. And yes. He shows you all the things that are so close and dear to his heart. And we know we're gonna try, we're gonna bring the hope and the light. But in the midst, and all it does is to show you his heart, how his heart breaks. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I understand. And his heart breaks, and it's like we have this broken heart just because he shows us his heart. And it's like our heart is just all compassion. And like there's no, we, we're not judging it and so forth. And this is how we're going to be able to move fully because it's we're so overwhelmed by compassion. Yeah. Love of the heart of the Father. Yeah. And we become Miss Bethany. This is where he stays. He just, we, we, you know, we, we, he just loved to go to Bethany. And he, he hangs out, he, he just never leaves, he stays. And it may seem like you're doing nothing. It may seem as if nothing is really transparent, but a lot is going on because yeah. he has so transformed us. He has so transformed us into his full yeah. image, who he is. And it's been us his heart. And you can't move, but within the heart of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I believe that comes through through knowing him. Yeah. More and more. Awesome. Thank you, Joan. Well, Hector, Donna, uh, anybody else too? What what how is your transition uh, transitionary lifestyle going? What's what's uh is God doing anything in similar to, to what we're talking about there? Donna, go ahead. Go ahead. Me. Well, um, yeah, I uh, I'm definitely going through a a transition that I thought would never end, and it just gets deeper. And um, and I really appreciate the word I got from Joan last Sunday. Um, not to fear. And that was like that really came in right on time. Um, but what I, what I'm sensing, what I'm sensing is very much along those lines that, like, we want to go to this promised land because we know that as forerunners, we're going to open the way for many others to be able to get there. But if we don't really go there looking like him and being him and they seeing him and not us, then we're going to forerun into just another, another move that God will bless because he's merciful and grace and loving and his goal is to save people. But it's not the same as what that next generation really needs to see. So I, I feel that he's really, since I say that, and I believe that, he's breaking me down even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, it's some, so some, some of us don't know where you came from and out of the, out of the Baptist uh, realms, right? And uh, i share a little bit of that because it's really a uh, radical transition. <laughs> and I honor you, John, uh, Hector. <laughs> Uh, because it's just such an incredible move of God that's that's happening in your life that that it's amazing to see as as deep in it as you were uh, and where you're going now is just it's it's amazing. Yeah, I mean when when things start falling apart around you, based on the way that the world sees you, and unfortunately the apostolic and prophetic movement also way 
and judge by the eyes of the world. <laughs> it's, it's just unfortunate, especially when it comes to success, the way they see it. Um, you know, you have to, you have to recognize how Jesus forgave everyone, how Jesus just loved them, and how Jesus never even raised a word to defend himself, but rather just did his, his mission. So I think that transitionary process that, that at least I'm going through is more and more every day recognizing that, you know, even though I'm in my 60s, I still have a mission. And, and that uh, I was reserved for this time. Um, yes, I was a Southern Baptist pastor. Uh, yes, I got baptized by the Holy Ghost in my pastor's chamber. And, uh, and then I got the left foot of fellowship from them. And, um, and then tried to do things my way. <laughs> And, and yeah. chase, enjoying, and look for a covering <laughs> that that fits, and and all that is a transitionary route of really discovering that that uh, that uh, that he wants to use us in such a, a different way than we could understand. So when you said that word a little while ago, unknown, and and I'm going through this process with God saying, I want to understand you, God. I really want to understand <laughs> um, wow. the, the, the unknown is like, how can you understand the unknown without just stepping into it? So yeah. uh, I appreciate yeah. this word, Terry. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. awesome. Well, I want to uh, uh, give Donna some time here and the guys too, but how, how, I want to ask a question. How do you recognize when it's time to change? Most of us don't. We, we are just thinking, well, maybe this is a little bad experience I'm having. It's things are, are, are not working like they would. I, I don't understand it. But I believe there's, there's always uh, a, a revelation coming in if you seek his eternal purpose in that. I believe, uh, uh, like for me, uh, a lot of times I discovered there was no grace on favor on whatever I was mm -hmm. doing. Although even it was God before the grace and the favor lifted off and nothing worked like it used to. Exactly right. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. nothing. Absolutely. Maybe the room dried up, you know? Maybe the finances dried up. Go ahead, Donna. What are you thinking? I saw you I, on click. I think what you said is just a huge mouthful. And I think um, you guys have probably, you're probably like me in that you slowly come into the realization that this isn't working anymore. And, and a variety, on a variety of levels. And then you begin to ask the Lord what, what's happening here. Um, I tell you, it's just one of those things about progressing in maturity as a son of God to um, see the signs in advance, to read the messages in your dreams, to understand how angels are ordering your steps with who they're putting in front of you, or what books, what blog posts, what thoughts you're having, that these often can come right from Father, from the throne room of grace, and to realize that those are the things that are alerting you in advance to change. I think Jesus knows we struggle with change. Some of us, some of us on this call may not. I'm not one that particularly struggles with change, but I know people who do. Um, but I'm one who longs for the next. I'm longing for the next. I always picture myself as stepping on one iceberg flow to the next, trying to cross that that river. And I'm I'm stepping, I'm like hopping from one iceberg to the next, you know, that as they float down the river. Because I'm always ready for the change. This whole two scriptures we talked about is knowing him. As you look at him in a mirror, you become intimately acquainted, intimate friends with him, intimate son along with him. 
that you know his thoughts you become you you know we talked about oneness and union a lot you become you know his thoughts so you don't have to you you know one of the one of the scriptures that I, i've long considered most of the people in the courtrooms of heaven facebook group is is they're looking for an answer for their problems they want a way out of their problems and they're going to blame everything else all the surroundings all the people that are around them uh, they're not going to take a look inside most of them are not but if and i ask a lot of them i'm just i'm just the first place i go when i want to govern or counsel a person uh that that's in that realm i say uh um what if god told you if you struggle to lose your life you if you struggle to save your life you lose it if you lose your life for my sake you'll find it most of us are busy trying to save our life yeah my seven years in the wilderness in my camper van was the whole i didn't know it but the whole time was about surrendering and yielding and losing my life for his sake so that i may find it and know him now i'm still going through that <laughs> and i love that place it's become a lifestyle i'm no longer living in my van but it's become a lifestyle for me if i'm not fully if i'm not fully manifesting as he is so am i in this world there's still junk in me yeah. it's not anybody else's problem it's it's me and so that's why i always always first and foremost look in me whatever dream i have whatever vision i have whatever i encounter good bad and ugly i look in me where yeah. do i need to change where is this constricting legislation uh happening within me maybe it's from generational curses maybe it's from generational sins maybe it's from my own personal sins maybe it's from my mindsets maybe it's uh, the way i did things yesterday in the old uh move of god like hector's talking about and i'm i'm talking about coming out of the apostolic and the prophetic there's always always more yeah don't bad but my goal is to help people reach that that i mean this is my number one mandate i think it's just like as he is so am i in this world let's do that and we can step into that now because it's a present tense statement why are you waiting and contending and tearing and pressing in to something that god already said is that so stepping in actually accelerates the manifestation yeah. so don't wait uh uh god will god will fix you <laughs> yeah. yeah it's your desire to be uh, uh transformed from his image from one degree of glory to another and we just thought that glory realm and now what we're experiencing is we're experiencing some uh visitations of god glory but that's just a small taste of what god really wants to do he wants to build habitations of God's glory, then he wants to build cultures of God's glory around the world, then he wants to release his massive, ma massive glory. Let me tell you what the book of Enoch says. Uh, he says uh, that God removed the glory from the earth in the days of Enosh. That was right before uh, uh, Noah. He removed the glory. And the glory was 366 times the orb of the sun. Where he can't handle it. <laughs> we can't. And we want it. But that's all right. Because he's maturing us. He's transforming us so that we will. Yeah, that's right. And in Revelation, I don't remember the scripture. I wasn't even planning on talking about this. But it, it talks about a scripture in there that's like, there's a realm of God's glory that sounds like it's the angels can't even approach but it's 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 kind of code that that humans are able to enter into that glory that's why i believe the scripture is a little bit off when it says uh, god made man a little lower than angels i think it's the other way around god made angels a little lower than man so that's just extra 
freebie stuff. <laughs> but anyway, look at yourself differently. Yeah. And, and come into a greater relationship with the Father, with Jesus, Yeshua himself, and look at him as if he's standing right there in the face. And there, he is. Yes. Because yeah. your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to go somewhere for revival. You don't have to go somewhere to have a visitation with the Lord. You don't have to go anywhere to, yeah. to have a manifestation of God's glory. All we need to do is you are a gate of glory. All you have to do is, is step into it and believe it. Believe his word. We're going to be okay. believers of his word more than believers of my own mind, what my mind yeah. might have. That yeah, gets us up in too much trouble. I mean, we all have. There's all areas that we, we uh, help me with my unbelief. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I believe he's exposing us everything that's within us to get us to the level he wants us to level. And then we would come in. It's like when we're walking, I don't know when it's going to be. I believe it is now, but there's this maturation process. Like the scripture talks about being transformed from into his image. Uh, that's in the new Testament. So this, this transformation process is a maturing process so that we could be fully entrusted in the, in a uh, divine mystical union of as he is so I'm in this world. I'm sharing in his omnipis, uh, <laughs> omnipresence. I'm sharing in his omnipotence. I'm sharing in his omniscience. It's like, ooh, that's fun. And he'll trust you with, with the, as you, sh as you show yourself faithful, he entrust you with levels of uh, 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 experience that'll, that'll keep you going. It's like, that was so powerful. That was so crazy. That was nothing I've ever seen on earth, but he's entrusting me. He's teaching us. He's training with these encounters to, to grow you up and to mature us and to transform us into that same image. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love, I love the beauty of that. It's because it's his desire. He has called us into this. It's not something we want to make happen. He wants it more than we want it. Yeah. And he has, he's called us to this. It's our birthright. It's everything that he's designed us for. Everything. It's it's just, it's just I'm just overflowing with his heart right now. And just how much that he just pours. It's just, I want this for you. He's like, so I, this is the, the, this is just the ultimate, I think. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And I would add this to what Joan said. Um, he knows where you are on your journey of maturation to the reflection of him. And he's not put out with you it, yeah. because he knows right where you are. He knows why you're right there and maybe not two steps forward. Or he knows why he knows how you've progressed and overcome where you could be three steps back. Right. He wow. knows where you are in your maturation. He is loving you perfectly in your present. And I think for me, the transition to um, sonship, that process, more than anything, what I try to model is, the, is Jesus recognized that about the Father. Jesus knew that he had a mission and he knew the patience of Father that he was going to overcome to the point of getting to his accomplished mission. And so are we. And so don't let the condemner or the accuser come and tell you to compare yourself to somebody else because yeah. only father can know that. Yeah. And so we have to bind that thought that wants to travel through our mind that we're less than because we should be two, two steps forward or, you know, no. My father in heaven knows exactly where I am. And the more I trust and depend on him to get me to my next step, because he knows where I'm going, then mm -hmm. I, I lean on him more. This is, this is the humility maturation of a son to lean on the father to make it ready for you to step into. And if it's not ready on your path, in your unique set of circumstances, 
and according to your unique voice print and your unique thumbprint, then it's not ready, but it will be. It will be. Yeah, I'm trusting yeah. that. Yeah. So, so it's like one uh, one uh, things that helped me over the years to recognize uh, maybe a, a, a thought that wasn't from the throne or or something that I heard is that if it doesn't line up or if I have a check in my spirit, when that seed is planted, deal with it right then. Yeah. Don't don't focus on it. Don't go around the world a couple of times with that thought. It'll it'll spiral down and things will get worse and worse. But if yeah. you recognize it comes with a little practice, you'll recognize those seeds from the enemy uh, uh, more quickly, and you'll be able to shift it. Like this vision I had the, that um, that the uh, banqueting table of the Lord is a living entity. And and travel, every one of us has a banqueting table of the Lord with us. It travels with us in a different dimension. The only thing what happens is when that seed is planted, we can choose to go over to this side and eat at the banqueting table of the enemy, or we can feast on the banqueting table of the lord that has to happen that quick if you know i saw this table this banqueting table loaded i mean i could it was about this tall and i could just barely see what was up on it and and i know uh, most of them think it's down here but but it, i could barely see what was on it so i knew there was a lot of good stuff there and so i had to pull myself up but i had to realize that this is a living entity that travels with me everywhere i go 24 7 365. i have the opportunity to switch from one dimension to the other i'd rather switch to the banqueting table of the lord and yeah. dine off of that feast off of that table we've all been in in those kind of places and and so god bless you and you and you. You, you should uh that's in your spirit so you'll you'll uh you'll hopefully respond better next yeah, time something that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> anybody right. else got to recognize the seed that seed will grow more and more go ahead john I had something uh, fun that we did today with our children. We took them to see the Jesus Revolution movie. Have any of you all seen that? Um, highly recommended. It is a, uh, a, an account of the actual beginnings of the Jesus movement uh, with Lonnie Frisbee, uh, who's played by the guy that plays Jesus in The Chosen. So that's a lot of a fun crossover. But it's a story of how this very traditional pastor, Chuck Smith, uh, let's, he said, you know, if God brings me a hippie, you know, uh, that I'll, maybe I'll think about talking to the hippies, you know, well, then the next day or something, his daughter brings this hippie guy home that happens to be Lonnie Frisbee, you know, the long hair, the beard. And he was like, I didn't literally think that, you know, God would bring me a hippie, but here, this guy is like preaching Jesus and love and wants to move all these people into his church and he says there's nobody to take care of them long story short um you know it's how it was the beginnings of the jesus movement uh calvary chapel the vineyard on and on many other things that came out of that um but i thought it was just so good because it goes with your word today terry about the the transitional the um the forerunner because he this pastor has to make a decision Am I going to stay with the same old, same old and get the same results? Or like we've been asking, is it time for a change? And is this what God's asking me to do or to say or to enter into? And so I think I think we all feel a shift. We know we're in a transition of the ages here. There's a lot of transition going on. These are things that are constantly, I mean, whether you watch the news or whether you go and see what Father's doing over the world, there's a lot happening. So I, I, I'm just excited about this whole topic. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I want to share, I was reading uh, Pam's uh, message there. It says, Psalms 139.12 says, the darkness and the light are both alike to him. I love that. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. In the creation story, 
God said everything he created was good. Yeah. Does that include the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The thing is that we've always said the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is evil. Mm -hmm. And we just blanket that and the church has done that. But God created it and said it was good. Mm -hmm. So what my understanding is that we were seeking outside of God for knowledge. Rather than seeking him for good and evil. So mm -hmm. now we've become so adept at uh, the eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's become a, a restricting legislation or a constitution within ourselves that we live by. That's not of God. Why would he create something and then say it's evil? It's not evil. It's evil what, how they responded to it. Mm -hmm. Go back and study that. There's some stuff in Shabbat.org that I think you, you can read about that. I think it was fascinating. It's just like, I kept hearing that. I kept saying, it's like, everything God created, he said was good. Amen. And so there has to be some something we're missing when we're looking at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. And so it's our misappropriation uh, or misunderstanding, which can come down to our mindsets or our motive in our heart that we, we want to gain something outside of Christ himself. But it, isn't it also that teaching? I mean, it, it comes to religious doctrine that, that's been taught for, I don't know where it started, you know, like exactly, but that stuff's, it's just not um, fresh manna anymore. No. You and know, you maybe. Said, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Maybe when it first got told, maybe people were like, well, you know, that's the best they knew. But we're, everything seems like that God is just bringing so much revelation to bring us up into the fullness. It's just like everything's shifting. It's like, whoa, I, you know, you look at something and think, oh, I believe that for, you know, however long you believed it. And then now it's like somebody else gets a revelation of it and you're going, wow, I never thought about it that way. And it's just like our eyes are being opened and opened and opened and opened. And we're just, you know, moving with it. I, I think everybody's doing this coming up. Um, you know, I, I don't know. That's my take on it. Um, yeah, it's so well, cool. And I think glory to ever increasing glory, right? <laughs> so, Amen. But we didn't have that level of glory, that revelation of God's glory back then. We just said it was all evil. And yeah, uh, every, there was a devil under every rock. I mean, yeah, every rock. Yeah. It didn't matter. I've been in that church for about 15 years. You know, just like everything. I bind that thing, I bind that thing, and the other, yeah. thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, this lady, this lady I was counseling the other day, it's like she told me her dream and this big giant demon appeared in front of her in her car and she couldn't deal with it, didn't know how to deal with it. And things got worse and worse and it started constricting her, choking the breath out of her. Well, we kind of know what some of those things are, but, but the thing is, it's like I said, uh, you're still in the old warfare mentality. You need to come up here, come up above and uh, govern from above. You're not doing any good. It's, the stream is showing you you're not doing any good. You're not effective and operating on the battlefield. Yeah. You know, Terry, um, based on what Pam was sharing, um, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was always there. It wasn't until Adam had the fallen mindset when they went there and they no longer believed who they were and so forth, and it was good and evil. And um, but so what happened when we operate in a fallen mindset is how we now begin to see things. And, um, that's where, okay, that's good. That's and so our own judgment now becomes into play. I'm not, I'm just thinking now, I'm just really, I'm not saying yeah, this or not. But it comes out of a fallen mindset. 
Mm -hmm. when yeah. we no longer believe the truth of who we are and what God has said. Yeah. It is good. And now our judgment and everything now comes into play. And we are making, well, this is good and this is not good and this is good and so forth and so forth. And uh, just rambling thoughts I'm having, actually. So oh. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what it comes down to is we make unrighteous judgments. It's, yeah. yeah. And, but I love and, that rambling my, uh, thing that you just did, Jen. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. Good I'll, add, I'll, add, I'll add a ramble or two. Okay. I, I think in that fallen mindset where we begin to judge outside of relationship with father, because the disobedience to eat from that tree was the breaking of relationship where we no longer um, commune with father as sons who look just like him and operate like him. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, that was such the ploy of, of Satan to get us off track in that we were sons of God. We were yeah. little G gods. And, yeah. and that that is the redemption that Jesus returned to us. Right. And that we're, we're coming back into the recognition of, of who we are as we mature. And only this time we're receiving the grace to be changed by him and recognize yeah. that this transition change is father. He's the one doing this. Mm -hmm. he's growing not only is he growing us up individually he's also maturing the giftings in each one of us That's right. and he has the picture and the plan of the whole to, to so that when people look at us corporately or individually they're mm -hmm. going to go i can see god in you i can yeah. see father in you amen yeah that's, that's good so you ever walk down the hall and say your people look at you and say you're glowing <laughs> That's just a little expression of the glory of God that rests upon you. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I am. Yes. Yeah. I'm going for more glowing. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah uh, I like uh, 1 Corinthians 6 says, or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Mm -hmm. And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Uh, I would say that many of us are incompetent to try trivial cases. We're not mm -hmm. this governmental, legislative, judicial system that God created us to be. Do you not know that you, we are to judge the angels? So we are to judge. We are to judge ourselves. We all are to judge others. It doesn't mean expose them so much, but it means to, to righteously judge them as if God was doing it himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From I wonder sometimes if that word judge actually means discern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> right. To rightly discern. Rightly discern. Yeah. To rightly discern in love. Mm -hmm. Add that to that. I just to rightly discern in love where another person's coming from. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all about restoration anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so all, all the pieces of the puddle puzzle seem to fit and move us into the place where God's restoring all things and yeah. moving us into position and of uh, identity and authority and sonship and and creating this governmental legislative and judicial son and and causing us to be a governing legislative and judicial being everywhere we go and everywhere uh, everything we do and everything we say is uh, is as if Yahweh was say, saying those things himself. Yeah. We can be trusted with our own court system. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, woo, yeah, come on. I have a question for John. Terry, can I ask John a question? Yeah, absolutely. John, when you went to the Jesus Revolution movie and you saw how they presented all that, do you see a, what's your perception? What's your spirit know? Tell us, we're, we're, we're going to pull on God's grace here for a mm. second. What, is, what, it, what do you see coming out of that? Why that movie right now? Like that has to be God, right? Why that movie right now? What, what are angels putting together so that we can walk in? Um, I think that it could be 
um, and most things, but one thing could be is that there's another shift happening. Well, we know, you know, that we're shifting into the next stage of the kingdom, you know, yeah. the outpouring uh, of, you know, the water vessel here and, you know, reconciliation back to the Father and that we're the age of that change. So just like that hinge is that uh, the hinge of the winging for the Jesus version, it's like there's now another hinge that we can be a part of this shift this now. I don't yeah. think the lesson there is it's time to invite the hippies back in. I think, <laughs> I mean, they, Come on. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I've been part of movements um, that, you know, nobody was wearing shoes and, you know, like uh, everybody's wearing bathing suits to church. You know, this is Florida and, you know, it was full on, you know, like come and worship down front and get healed and all that, get ministry prayer. So like, you know, that was, that line was already crossed, but, but now it's like this, I think it's a move of the heart of God meeting um, perhaps what he wants to do now in, in, in moving us into this place of sonship as we're learning here in this group of how to legislate, how to govern, how to go deeper. Um, so those are just some of my thoughts. Thank you. For sharing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Can I say something? Um, I, I watched the clip of the um, Jesus revolution and I, I attend a house church here and we've recently come together. There's roughly 20 of us. Um, we come from all different backgrounds we all have different functions in the body and but we've come together and we've decided we're going to go into the streets in april and in order to come together we went on a retreat um last weekend and we went there with the sole intention of learning to love one another well so that when we go out in the street that we're a like a, a cell of love, we're, we're not going to break from that. And that's our, all of us are committed to that in a huge way. And, and so while we were there, there were 400 youth there from the Presbyterian church um, at the same time we were there. And so we got invited to their worship service on Sunday morning. And the message was, so oppressive i mean it was really hard to sit there and not stand up and go it's just wrong it's just wrong i mean just this stuff just welled up inside and so um while they were worshiping um we were we were yelling and doing stuff and and one of us ran around the the front of the auditorium you know <laughs> we didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room there but we went back to our little place where we were the fireside room and we began to intercede and we began to pray and we began to worship the Lord because through this whole weekend we didn't have an agenda we just worshiped the Lord and we just let him bring us up and then just work on us I think more happened to us collectively than could have happened if somebody would have stood up and said okay one two we're going to do this message and then this person's going to speak and then this we didn't do that at all we just worshiped and praised him and it was very powerful. Um, I know it definitely changed my life and I'm sure the others can say the same thing about themselves. Um, but anyway, when we were worshiping and interceding and asking the Lord about the youth, what the conclusion that we came to was we were gonna go down and stand in the hallway in between the cafeteria and where the auditorium was, where the youth were meeting and we were just gonna start worshiping the Lord. And their message was, their theme was, can the dry bones live, right? That was the theme of their conference. And so we just started singing and um, these kids, a whole lot of them came in and started joining with us because we were singing the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we just sing that over and over and we were clapping and singing. And, you know, one of, we do have some young people in our group and they were blown the shofar and, um, you know, some of the kids were joining in, but their, their group leaders were shooing them out of the hallway and telling them they had to go. And they, we very much met, were met with a resistance 
to what we did, but we still did it. We did it despite, and we kept telling them that we were there, that we, we served the same God, that we came in love, we came in peace. And it's like a bright line is being drawn, choose who you're going to serve um, in, 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 the, in religion that that spirit is, is being drawn. And I know other people that work with the youth and stuff like that, and they're running into the same, the very same thing where it's a, like a shift like this, that's just, uh, there's a split. It's like, it's just, a, it's splitting groups. I, I can, I mean, it's just observation, but it's splitting because some are following this way of saying, okay, God is love. And and we're, we're pressing in and going further in and just wanting to lay down everything and say, God, what do you want us to do? How can we reach out? How can we do this, do that, do the other thing? Whatever it is, he's got placed on your heart. But then these people on this other side are saying, no, it's like this. And they're, they're, I mean, their message to these kids was they were wicked and they were sinners. And it was oppression like I just have not heard in a long, long, long time. And I, I was so shocked kind of at, at, at it. And, you know, um, the one thing that, that did come good to all of us was that we, we recognized before we ever even had that time of worship was there was a, the one, one woman pointed out, she's um, a prophet and, but she pointed out there's resignation that you get, you resign yourself to things got to be a certain way. And it's resignation. And she said, when you go out into the streets like this, you've got to overcome that because you, you'll, you'll just, you won't step out and be strong and not fear if you've got that resignation in yourself that, oh, it's somebody else's job, right? It's the pastor's job or it's the leader's job or somebody's job. You've got to, you know, you've got to overcome that in yourself for all of us to be able to do that. And I don't know if I went off topic, but that that was my observation. And I thought this movie showed that the love that happened, the love that happened and the love that was necessary. And there were still people in tradition that didn't want to accept the hippies coming in and did they were stuck in their tradition. They said, no, we're not going to show them the love of God. They have they have their sandals on and long hair and, you know, they're wearing beads and they're their clothes, look at their clothes, and the girls have flower lays in their hair, and all we're not going to accept them. And that's what I see as the as the line. It's it's the love of God. It's the love of God, um, you know, that that that's going to manifest and make the difference in whatever we show. Um, I don't know. That's Yeah, I think we can all say amen to that one, Pam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, awesome, awesome. What time is it? 7.12? We're oh, past we're, our hour. We've been an hour. It's like a guy who lives outside the realm of time. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get off track. I didn't miss a day. I didn't jump ahead a day this week. I think I was pretty right on track every every day this week. So uh, it's awesome. And so, uh, well, let's close. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Uh, thank you for joining us, Christine. Hope we didn't scare you too bad. You know? <laughs> no, it's uh, it was great. Um, I just relate to a lot of what you guys said. So. Um, Anyway, it was good. I'll probably chat more another week. <laughs> okay, great. I'm just, where, where do you live? In Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Oh, wow. Oh, I want to take yeah. my cameras up there, my drone. I want to go up there and <laughs> film. Uh, I've never been up that way. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a new journey for me the last few months, getting involved with all kinds of different people. And it's it's the Lord's just absolutely unwaveringly pulling me mm. and um, I just need to find people that I can listen to and, and relate to. And so I don't think, wow, you know, well, there so you anyway, go. it's good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we just uh, reproduce reproducers, you know, so you, you get a little here, you go out there and reproduce it wherever you are. 
So Amen. I just want to say thanks. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Dreams and encounters are accelerating, especially mm. encounters. Mm. Uh, I just had one crazy one for an election in Ocala upcoming. And uh, I'm going to share that with my friends down there and see what's going on. And uh, so just expect, you know, they're wild and crazy. That's the way dreams are. They're just wild and crazy. But God has an interpretation for them. Yeah. And uh, things are always, 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 always happen uh, intentionally yeah. with the mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah, thank you for your Find that eternal uh, truth in it, and you can walk in greater peace and joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. So, God bless you guys. Good to see you. Have an awesome, awesome week. Hey, Terry, can I say one more thing? Sure. I just wanted to thank you for being a forerunner. Mm -hmm. and for creating this environment oh, thank you so much you. god bless oh, you thank you thank you i love you guys and yeah it's awesome it's mm -hmm. awesome awesome yeah, yes so. amen <laughs> <laughs> yeah well good night everybody we'll see you next week